Hey guys and welcome to the video and here today I'm going to go over uh, the method that I use in order to test the healthiness or lack of healthiness in a PS3's hard drive. And I've been doing this for a really long time and I wanted to share this with you since ooh, probably towards the end of 2017 I put it on my bucket list of PS3 uh, videos that I wanted to do just never got around to it I'm taking the next few days off from my normal day trading stuff because I have so much personal things I have to catch up on plus I wanted to do a couple of videos including the next emulation uh, tutorial video for the PS3 so anyway um, I have like four systems sitting there that I need to mod that's one of the things I need to catch up on so right when I started to work on the first one I'm like hey this will be a perfect opportunity to go ahead and show you how I do this which doesn't involve you you know needing a PC and removing your hard drive or anything like that so let's go ahead and get started by covering some of the housekeeping stuff that you're seeing up on the screen okay so the first thing is that what we're gonna be doing is pretty much just installing firmware into the PS3 just regular firmware whether it's for a modded system if you're modded or a regular system if you have a regular PS3 we're going to be doing it two times and we're going to be timing it and looking for certain things along the way anyway because we're doing this just keep in mind that this is not a 100 percent perfect exact science method but it is very accurate i've already done several hundred ps3s over the last i don't know four years or more uh probably 400 systems or so 500 systems already and uh, it works very well because we're installing firmware you of course may lose any customized theme that you have it will remain in your system you'll just have to reinstall it if you have a modded system and you have like customized webman icons or just customized icons in general of course you may lose those as well you just have to reinstall them for those of you that have like xmmb plus or whatever that's called installed you may lose that and it may go back to stock same deal if you have the CFW extras uh, like category thing installed, uh, you lose that and it'll go back to stock. So just have to reinstall it. If you have any customized boot up images or customized boot up sound, customized waves, all of that is going to go back to stock and will need to be reinstalled for those of you that have modded systems. You're not going to lose out any games. You're not going to lose out on game saves. If you have like the folder album set up where you have everything nice and neat and organized on your PS3's XMB, those albums should remain intact. This method will work on any regular or any modded PS3, regardless of what firmware you have installed. Those of you who are modded, it will work for Kex or Dex the same way. And again, any model, any firmware, it doesn't matter. For those who are modded, I strongly suggest that if you have any spoofers running like Set Enabler, you disable the spoofer first, reboot the system so that it reboots with the uh, spoofer off. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, and since we are installing firmware, all the regular rules for firmware installation apply here, whether you're modded or on a regular PS3. Uh, that means that you can only install firmware that is equal to or greater than the firmware you currently have installed in your system. So if you have a regular PS3 and it's already on 482, then we're just gonna be installing 482 again uh, on top of it, which is fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, if you're watching this video later on and another update has come out, well then you would install you know, 482 or something higher. If you have a regular, uh, let's say uh, PS3 that's on 470, then you would install 470 or any uh, firmware that's higher than that. For modded systems, same thing. If you're on, let's say, Rebug 482, then you're going to have to reinstall the Rebug you have again. Uh, that's 482, or you can install Ferrix 482 or anything higher. You just can't install firmware that is lower. So it has to be equal or greater to the one that is installed. I can't stress that enough. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what you need to do to set everything up because there's a billion and one tutorials that already have covered this. Plus here on this page, which I will provide a link for in the description, it's the official PlayStation firmware page. It tells you how to set up your FAT32 USB so that way you can uh, update the PS3. You can also download the latest official firmware 
right from here. So go ahead and follow all these instructions, plug the USB into any PS3 port, it doesn't matter which one. All right, and the last thing we're going to need here is a stopwatch or a stop clock program or app. Your phone should already have this functionality built into it somewhere. Uh, if not, you can just download an app real quick. Since I'm doing everything through the PC, I will be using my free stopwatch uh, program. What's important is that you need to be able to see the seconds in real time that's ultra important and you're going to see why here in a little bit so make sure you have all of that set up and everything else i'm going to go ahead and boot up the ps3 so we can get started on that end all right and one more pro tip before we start you can do a rebuild database i'm not going to show you how to do that you can just google how to rebuild ps3 database it's done through recovery mode and it's very very easy you don't lose your jailbreak or anything if you have a modded system uh, you're not going to lose out on your games or your saves or anything like that. And what it does, it just tidy things up a bit and organizes things back up again. So that way your install can be a little bit smoother, maybe, and, uh, you know, maybe give you a more accurate reading. It's not 100% necessary, but it's just one more step, you know, to make sure that the readings we get are just that much more accurate. All right, so now that we have everything set up and your USB plugged in and everything, let's get started. Let's go to system update. And then we're going to go to update via storage media, of course. Now, if you're installing a firmware that is the same as the firmware you already have installed, it's going to tell you you're trying to install the same firmware that's already installed. Are you sure you want to reinstall it? Just hit yes. Here, I'm installing 482 over 476, so I'm not getting that message. And we're going to go ahead and bypass all of this. Make sure we hit accept. And then over here, you're going to make sure you click start. Now, the key is that as soon as you see the uh, status bar pop up, you're going to go ahead and start your stopwatch. So let me go ahead and click start. OK, and it already popped up on my screen. Now, there's a one second delay between what's happening on my TV and what you're seeing here on the um, on the PC. So uh, I started it you know, right on time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let this all load up. And then I'm going to fast forward this a bit. And when we get to a certain point on the next screen, I'll go ahead and uh, slow it down. Also make sure that you don't mess with your controller or anything. Just put it down and let it do its thing. Okay, so I've slowed things down to normal time here. Right here, you can start getting a kind of general idea of the state that your hard drive is in. Because when you get into the around like 52 to 68% range, this thing should jump right to 100%. Uh, so that's kind of the sweet spot. Of course, if it happens below like 52%, that's great. But that's the normal range. It depends on the size of your hard drive and all the stuff you have installed in uh, the hard drive itself you know you're okay even if it does it maybe at 70 percent but if it goes up see there we go and it just jumped right at like what 54 percent now that's a really good sign of course i don't have anything installed and then when it by the way when it hits 100 percent, stop your clock <laughs> i didn't stop mine but it stopped right uh it happened right like at 350 or 351 so that's pretty good but we are going to do it again anyway um, yeah, when you have this hard drive has nothing on there at all. And I redid, you know, a full system restore and whatever. Um, so it happened like at 54%. If you have a bunch of stuff installed and you have a bigger hard drive, I think this one is 160 or 120. If you have like a 500 one, then yeah, it'll probably go up to like 64, 68%, 62, somewhere around there. But if you start getting into like the mid 70s or into especially the 80 percent range or higher, then that's telling you that there is something going on. Your hard drive is not working at, you know, um, how should I say it's not optimum. It should be happening at 70 percent or lower. It, sh it shouldn't be passing that because I've had 500 gigs hard drives loaded with stuff and it normally jumps at around 64, 66, maybe 68 percent. Um, so I wouldn't start really getting, you know, concerned until it takes up to like 74% or higher 
to start jumping to that 100%. And if it gets to the 80% range or higher than that, then there's something definitely wrong. So make a note of the time here. In my case, it was like 350 or 351. And then we're going to do the process all over again. I'm going to reset the clock. And we're going to go back. And we're going to reinstall it again. And we are always going to use the second time, not the first. Now you can see here it's saying we already have the same one. We're just going to hit yes. And as soon as we see that status bar, we're going to uh, start our clock. Now I started my clock a little bit earlier because on the TV it happened about one second before. All right, so I'm putting it back in real time because this is around the spot where it jumps. See, right at 52%. That's great. Let's stop it. And this time is at 407. And we're going to go by the second time. Whether the second time is higher or lower, you are going to use that one as the measurement against this chart that I made. And 407 is actually really good. So let me go ahead and uh, wait till this loads up. I'm going to go pop up the chart right now so you can see it and see how this measures up and see how yours measures up. All right, so here's my super high tech, super high speed chart of goodness. And if you have any complaints about it or gripes, make sure you direct them towards my assistant down in the comment section. But if you like it, then I'll take full credit for it. Anyway, remember, we're going by the time after the second installation. So if you ended up with four minutes and 10 seconds or lower, fantastic. Congrats, your HDD is in great condition. And by the way, this is extremely rare. Most PS3s, because of their age and the clock hours on them, they will not fall uh, in this range. You happen to see it here on this one because that PS3 is in excellent condition outside. I looked through the vents. I haven't opened it up. But I looked through the vents. It's super clean. The last saves that were on there were from like February 2017. It was 476 firmware, which is old. Um, yeah, it just seemed like this PS3 didn't get used all that much. So I shouldn't be all that surprised. But this is pretty rare. Uh, if you're 411 to 422 range, your uh, hard drive is doing really good. Don't worry about it too much at all. If it falls in the 423 to 434 range, don't worry about it either all that much. This is normal. Most PS3s will fall in this range. Um, and your hard drive is performing average. It's, it's not doing super good, but it's not doing super bad either. Maybe you can test it every two to four months, uh, you know, running this installation test, uh, you know, just to keep up with it. If you ended up in the 435 to 445 range, then you need to be a little bit cautious. That means it probably is not working as optimum as it should be. It maybe has some bad sectors. You might think at some point in the near future of maybe defragging it um, and then you know reinstalling it and see if that works and brings down the time a bit. Who knows? It may last you another year or two or whatever, but definitely. Definitely, um, you know, you need to be paying really close attention to it. And then anything 446 or higher, um, yeah, you're in trouble. You may want to be thinking about swapping it out very soon or at the very least trying that defrag uh, really soon and then seeing how it goes from there. Okay, and before I end the video, I'm going to go over a few more pro tips with you to maybe help you out in diagnosing your hard drives, um, you know, things that I've learned over the years. And one of them is navigating through the XMB. And a lot of people don't know this. When you have a you know hard drive that's doing what it's supposed to do, you can navigate through the XMB, you know, pretty much without a problem. Everything is nice and buttery smooth. You can go from category to category and, uh, you know, it just moves effortlessly without any problems like you see there. Uh, if you're starting to experience hesitation, like when you go from one category to the next, it hesitates for like a half a second or a second or two. A lot of times that's an issue with the hard drive. One of the ways also that I tested is that I'll come here to where it says theme settings and I'll press the X button. As soon as I press the X button down, even before I lift up my thumb, I say one Mississippi, not fast or whatever, just normal one Mississippi. By the time you're done, you should be on the next screen. So I'll press it one Mississippi 
and there we go it pops up now you're seeing it happen as a delay here on the PC because there is a delay going you know through the Elgato and stuff but on my TV it happened right away after you're done saying one Mississippi if it still takes like a second or more for this um, you know next panel to pop up that could be an issue with the hard drive all right so I'm having to do some weird editing because um, uh, the video is just stretching on too long. Anyway, uh, one more thing I want to add is that also when you're starting to get, you know, laggy games or games that freeze for like a second or two or three here and there, that could be the sign of a, a faulty hard drive or one that's starting to go bad or whatever. Uh, it, if you have a game, you know, in the system, a disc, sure, it could be a dirty disc. It could be a dirty laser lens or your disk drive that's going bad. But sometimes it can be the hard drive that's going bad. If you're experiencing lag on the XMB, like I described earlier, and you're experiencing issues with the games, you know, freezing here and there, even for small amounts of times or any type of lag, then it may very well be the hard drive. Normally, when I experience those two problems at the same time, sure enough, when I run this firmware install test, almost every single time, the times will end up being somewhere in one of these two bottom range ones every time. And then once I switch it uh, to a good hard drive, uh, the problems go away. This video went a little bit longer because I wanted to be more detailed since I'm not going to do one on the PS3 hard drive probably ever again. Uh, so yeah, I figured I'd share all that stuff with you. Sorry we went on so long. But thanks again for watching as always make sure that you uh you know smash that like button and you subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you for the next one take care